Hello everyone! Metal fatigue is the progressive and localized structural damage that occurs when material is subjected to cyclic loading. It is difficult to detect progressive deterioration during the fatigue process, so catastrophic failure can occur without warning. In 1988, the Aloha airline Boeing 737 suffered extensive damage due to fatigue failure. The plane was subjected to 90,000 cycles of takeoffs and landings, causing multiple fatigue cracks in the plane's fuselage. In 2007, the Minneapolis I-35 bridge collapsed into the Mississippi River during the rush hour due to metal fatigue failure. It is estimated that 85% of all structural failures are caused by material fatigue. This video, we will show you how random vibrations affect structural failure due to metal fatigue. Ready? Let's get started. Random vibration analysis predicts statistical properties of a structural response, typically the standard deviation, one sigma of a displacement, force, or stress for a structure subjected to random cyclic loading, in which the vibration happens in many frequencies simultaneously. In random vibration analysis, the input excitations are statistical in nature, as well as the output responses such as displacement, stress, and so on. As we mentioned earlier, a common cause of structural failure is metal fatigue, which is damage associated with repeated loading. In general, there are two approaches to calculate fatigue life of the structure subjected to cyclic loading, the stress life and the strain life approach. Stress life is typically used for high cycle fatigue, 1 e power of 4 to 1 e power of 9 cycles of the load. In this case, stresses are usually low compared to the material's ultimate strength. On the other hand, the strain life approach is typically used for row cycle fatigue, where the number of cycles of loading is low. Often, plastic deformation occurs with low cyclic fatigue. ANSYS Mechanical Fatigue Tool supports fatigue analysis in the frequency domain for random vibration and harmonic analysis. This calculation uses the stress life method since strain life method is not supported for frequency-based fatigue analysis. Stress life fatigue analysis is driven by relationship between stress S and the number of cycles to failure and hence we call it SN fatigue analysis. The SN stress versus cycles data is usually experimental and provided to the user. The SN curve is often represented with discrete data points and curve fit. These curves are typically defined in engineering data in mechanical using a data table. If we look at the SN curve, we can see that for the stress amplitude S, the number of cycles to failure is N. With this N, we can compute the damage per cycle of the loading and compute the fatigue life as 1 over damage. The ratio of lowercase n sub i to capital N sub i is called the damage fraction, where lowercase n sub i is the actual number of cycles and capital N sub i is the allowable number of cycles from the SN curve. To compute cumulative damage of the structure, the minus rule is used. It is based on the idea that every stress cycle uses up part of the fatigue life of the structure. As we mentioned previously, the SN curve is often represented using discrete data points. However, for random vibration-based fatigue analysis, the SN curve must be represented using either one power law, linear log log space, or two power law, bilinear curves. If a linear or bilinear SN curve is not directly defined, the mechanical fatigue tool creates a linear representation using the first and the last data point in the SN data table. Linear interpolation is done using equation n times s at the power of m equal a, where n is the number of cycles to failure, s is the stress amplitude in pascals, m is a fatigue strength exponent, and finally a is a fatigue strength coefficient. 
In engineering data, we can directly define SN curve by specifying the fatigue strength coefficients and fatigue strength exponents. Linear SN curve uses the straight line and n times at s at the power of m equal a equation, while bilinear SN curve uses two straight lines and two equations, n times s to the power of m equal a and n times s to the power of r equal c where m and r are the first and the second fatigue exponent respectively and a and c are the first and the second fatigue strength coefficients respectively. Sq, the stress amplitude at the transition point in pascals and nq, the number of cycles to failure at the transition point are automatically calculated in engineering data. In addition to the proper definition of the fatigue material properties, the stress ranges and associated number of cycles must be determined to calculate fatigue damage caused by random vibration. There are three random vibration fatigue cycle counted methods supported in ANSYS fatigue tool. Narrow band formulation used only for narrow frequency range, Steinberg formulation used for multiple frequencies over a wide frequency range. It is the most used electronic industry and it is most accurate method out of the three, hence it is the most used in general. Wurstchen formulation is specific to the oil and gas industry standard. In this video, we will focus our attention on the Steinberg formulation. This formulation utilizes all three stress levels, one sigma, two sigma, and three sigma, and their rate of occurrence. The Steinberg formulation assumes a Gaussian distribution with 68.27% of the cycles occurring at the one sigma stress, 27.18% of cycles occurring at the two sigma stress, and 4.28% of cycles occurring at three sigma stress. The Steinberg cycle counting method along with the minus rule is used to compute the total fatigue damage and life of the system. The total fatigue damage calculated using Miner's rule can be expressed with this formula, where lowercase n sub i is the actual number of cycles, which depends on the statistical frequency. For example, lowercase n sub 1 sigma is the actual number of cycles at or below the one sigma level and can be calculated as 0.683 f sub zero times t. The statistical frequency f sub zero is calculated as omega sub zero over two pi, where omega sub zero is sigma x dot over sigma x. Sigma x dot is the RMS stress velocity result, which is stress based on velocity result, and sigma x is the RMS stress result. The random vibration fatigue calculation depends on the statistical frequency, which is the ratio of RMS velocity and RMS displacement. ANSYS Mechanical by default writes displacement solution into the database, but not the RMS velocity. Under analysis settings for random vibration analysis, one could set the output controls to include the RMS velocity and acceleration into the database. Once the results from random vibration analysis are available and written in the database, the fatigue tool can be used to calculate the fatigue damage and life. The cycle counted method can be selected from the dropdown. Stress component is set to equivalent stress by default However, user can choose different stress components based on the available data. Exposure duration is the time in seconds that specific loading is applied. The calculated fatigue damage is for the entire duration. For random vibration-based fatigue analysis, fatigue life is always reported in seconds and fatigue damage is reported per the exposure duration. Hence, the exposure duration doesn't affect fatigue life, but it does affect fatigue damage. Let's now see on a simple example of a drone arm how to calculate the random vibration fatigue life and damage of the structure. 
In this walkthrough example, we will see how to perform a random vibration fatigue analysis and appropriately interpret the results. A drone hovering in the air is subjected to random vibrations caused by its motors. We will see how these vibrations induce the fatigue damage as well as life expectancy of the drone arm. So without further ado, let's get started. Open WBPZ drone arm file that has predefined random vibration analysis workflow on the project page and predefined model analysis in ANSYS Mechanical. Double click on model cell to open Mechanical. The material used for a drone arm is structural steel. Open material tab and click on structural steel. We can see the ascent curve is defined in the log log space. Please note that even though there are multiple data points available for random vibration fatigue analysis, only the first and the last point from ascent data table are considered, and the linear curve between them is used for solving the analysis. For the mesh, body sizing is used with um, element size of 2 mm. Click on Analysis Settings and make sure that the number of modes extracted is 20, such that the frequencies of the modes obtained will range from 0 to 1.5 times the maximum input PSD frequency value, which is 10,000 Hz. Under Output Controls, Stress Strain are set to Yes and Nodal Forces to Constrain Nodes. As you can notice, the Fixed Support Boundary Condition is applied on the cylindrical hole at the end since it is attached to main chassis. Solve the model analysis. 20 modes are extracted, where the maximum frequency is a little over 15,000 Hz. Now right-click on Random Vibration, insert PSDG Acceleration. Set the boundary conditions to fix support and direction to Y-axis. In this example, we will be using a simple PSD input, which has constant value of 0.055 G square over Hertz, ranging from 50 Hertz to 10,000 Hertz. By default, the solver does not calculate RMS velocity and RMS acceleration results, which are essential to obtain the statistical frequency necessary to calculate the fatigue life. To change that, go to Analysis Settings, Change Calculate Velocity and Calculate Acceleration to Yes. Solve the Random Vibration Analysis. Now let us insert the three equivalent stress results from three sigma values since each of them will contribute to the damage calculation using the Steinberg method. We can see that for one sigma, the maximum equivalent stress value obtained is 38.7 megapascals, where 68.27% of the cycles occur. The maximum equivalent stress value obtained for two sigma is 77.4 megapascals, where 27.18% of cycles occur. And finally, for the three sigma, the maximum equivalent stress value obtained is 116 megapascals, where 4.28% of the cycles occur. Let us now check the fatigue results by inserting the fatigue tool. Right click on the solution, insert fatigue, fatigue tool. Under the details tab, notice that method selection is defined as Steinberg method and stress component on which the fatigue results will be calculated is by default set to equivalent stress. The exposure duration is given as one second and for now we will leave it as it is. Right click on the fatigue tool and insert live. Right click and evaluate all results. We can see that the life expectancy of the drone arm obtained is 86,000 seconds or approximately 24 hours under the defined loading and the drone arm will fail in the fillet area as shown in the contour plot. Let's check the fatigue damage. Right click on the fatigue tool and insert damage. Right click and evaluate all results. We can see that the maximum damage for the exposure duration of one second is 1.16 times 10 to the power of minus 5, which occurs near the fillet area. 
Also notice that it is the same area where we get the minimum life, since life is calculated as 1 over damage. Now let us see how the exposure time influences the fatigue, life and damage. Insert another fatigue tool and change the exposure to 1000 seconds. Right click on the fatigue tool and insert life and damage, evaluate or results. We can notice that the fatigue life does not change at all, whereas the damage has significantly increased from 1.16 times standard power of minus 5 to 0.0116. This is because the damage will accumulate more over a longer exposure to the loading environment, and it is reported per duration exposure, while fatigue life is always reported in seconds. With this, the walkthrough example is completed. Let's summarize. In this video, we discussed random vibration-induced fatigue analysis using fatigue tool, and following are some key takeaways. The ascent curve represented in ANSYS Mechanical is linear or bilinear in nature. The Steinberg cycling counting method is used in this video, other methods are available for vibration fatigue analysis, but are not covered in this lesson. Miner's rule is used to sum up damage. Fatigue life is reported in seconds, while damage is reported per duration exposure. A walkthrough example is shown on how to perform a random vibration fatigue analysis. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.